To finish off with something that really goes to town with drawing, I'm going to walk you through creating a simple Spirograph with SwiftUI. Spirograph is the trademark name for a toy where you place a pencil inside a circle and spin it around the circumference of another circle, creating various geometric patterns that are known as roulettes, like the casino game. Now this code involves a very specific equation. I'm going to explain it, but it's totally okay to skip this if you're not interested. This is just for fun and no new Swift or SwiftUI is covered here. Our algorithm has four inputs. The radius of the inner circle, the radius of the outer circle, the distance of the virtual pen from the center of the outer circle, and what amount of the roulette to draw. This is optional, but I think it really helps show what's happening as the algorithm works. So let's start with that. Struct spirograph conforms to shape. Let inner radius, int. Let outer radius, int. Let distance, int. Let amount, cg float. We then prepare three values from that data, starting with the greatest common divisor of the inner radius and outer radius, also known as the GCD. Calculating the GCD of two numbers is usually done with Euclid's algorithm, which in a slightly simplified form looks like this. Func GCD underscore A int underscore B int returns int. Then we'll make variable copies of A and B. We'll say var A equals A and var B equals B. Next, while B is not equal to zero, take a copy of B into temp, set B to be a modulus b, and then set a to be temp. And finally return a. As you can see, that should go inside the spirograph struct. The other two values are the difference between the inner radius and outer radius, and how many steps we have to perform to draw the roulette. This is 360 degrees multiplied by the outer radius, divided by the greatest common divisor, multiplied by our amount input. All our inputs work best when provided as integers. But when it comes to drawing the roulette, we have to use CG float. So we're also going to create CG float copies of our inputs. So add this path in method to the spirograph struct now. Func path in rect CG rect returns path. Let divisor equals GCD inner radius outer radius. And then we'll make CG float copies of outer radius and inner radius and distance and make a new constant called difference that is the inner radius minus the outer radius. And finally we'll calculate how many points to draw. We'll make endpoint equal to the ceiling of 2 times cg float dot pi times outer radius divided by cg float divisor times amount. The ceiling function here will just round the value up to the next whole number. Then there's more code to come. Finally, we can draw the roulette itself by looping from zero to our endpoint and placing points at precise xy coordinates. Calculating the xy coordinates for a given point in that loop, known as theta, is where the real mathematics comes in. But honestly, I just converted the standard equation to Swift from Wikipedia. This is not something I would dream of memorizing x is equal to the radius difference multiplied by the cosine of theta, added to the distance multiplied by a cosine of the radius difference divided by the outer radius multiplied by theta. And y is equal to the radius difference multiplied by the sine of theta, subtracting the distance multiplied by the sine of the radius difference divided by the outer radius multiplied by theta. That's the core algorithm. But we're gonna make two small changes. We're going to add to x and y half the width or height of our drawing rectangle respectively, so it's centered in our drawing space. And if theta is zero, i.e. if it is the first point in our roulette being drawn, we'll call move to rather than add line to for our path. Here's the final code for the path in method. Replace the more code to come comment with this. Var path equals path. For theta in, stride from, 0 through endpoint by 0 0.01. Var x equals difference times cosine theta plus distance times cosine difference 
divided by outer radius times theta. Var y equals difference times sine theta minus distance times sine difference divided by outer radius times theta. Then we'll offset the x and y to make sure it's centered inside our drawing rectangle. x plus equals rec dot width divided by 2. And y plus equals rec dot height divided by 2. Now if theta is equal to 0, it's our first point. We'll say path dot move to cg point x x y y. For all other values, we'll do path dot add line 2 cg point x x y y. And finally return path. I realize that was a lot of heavy mathematics, but the payoff is about to come. We can now use that shape in a view, adding various sliders to control the inner radius, outer radius, distance, amount, and even color. At state, private var, inner radius equals 125.0. At state, private var, outer radius equals 75.0. At state, private var, Distance equals 25.0. At state, private var, amount CG float equals 1.0. And at state, private var hue equals 0.6. Then inside the body, we'll do VSAC spacing 0. Then a spacer. Then our spirograph. Inner radius, int of inner radius. Outer radius, int of outer radius. Distance, int of the distance and amount, amount. We'll then stroke that spirograph with a color, hue of hue, saturation of one, brightness of one, line width of one. Then we use dot frame, width 300, height 300, and another spacer, so our spirograph's got some space around it. Then we'll make a group, and text, inner radius, the int of our inner radius. Then a slider with the value of our inner radius in the range 10 to 150, stepping by one each time, with horizontal and bottom padding. Then text outer radius, the int of our outer radius. Another slider with outer radius in the same range, the same step, and with the same padding. Next, our distance, again, into our distance. Another slider attached to that value. The range will be 1 to 150, with a step of 1, and the same padding as before. Then a text for our amount, with a specified percent dot 2f. And a slider for the amount, with the same padding again, And finally, text color with a slider for our hue and just horizontal padding. That was a lot of code, but I really hope you take the time to run the app and appreciate just how beautiful roulettes are. What you're seeing is actually only one form of a roulette, known as a hypertrochoid. With small adjustments to the algorithm, you can generate epitrochoids and more, which are beautiful in different ways. Before I finish, I'd like to remind you that the parametric equations used here are mathematical standards, rather than things I just invented. I literally went to Wikipedia's page on hypertrochoids and converted them to Swift.